What is up, guys? It's your boy Crystal Planet 99 here again, taking a break from Steve Vai to give you a review of Alice in Chains Dirt. I have a guest on the show today, the man, my good friend Brennan Norberg. What is up? Hey, um, I'm Brennan Norberg. Uh, we some Alice in Chains today. Been really getting into them. Uh, you know, brought into the grunge scene with uh, Nirvana, becoming my favorite all time band for. A whole year making a playlist on Spotify for about, I think it's like 10 hours, 30 minutes long, you know, full of Nirvana. But then um, I started experimenting because I got so full of my Nirvana, you know, your, s- your hunger. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to explore and, you know, fill, fill that hole. Um, so I looked out, I listened to some Soundgarden, some Pearl Jam, and Alice in Chains, but my favorite one that. I, I found out of the three other three, you know, there's this whole bunch more like Melvins, which I actually absolutely love the Melvins, like Mud Honey too, all the Seattle bands. Um, but Alice in Chains definitely, you know, piqued my interest. They kind of took the cake so, for you. Yeah, yeah when you asked you. me to record or record a re- review with you, I was like, well, I've been listening to Dirt a lot lately, so, you know, might as well see what we can dive into it and get, get more out of. Dude, yeah, album. and I love doing it, man. Yeah, Trust it was, me. It was quite a journey, yeah, honestly. I, but I, anyway, guys, if you guys do not agree with what we say, that is just fine, because everybody has an honest opinion, and ours are no different from anybody else's honest opinions. Mm-hmm. So let's just keep it civil, honest, and down-to-earth. How does that sound? Sounds good to me. Sounds great to me. So anyway, guys, enough of that. Let's get just right into this guy. Them Bones. So what I said about this is that the opening track of the album wastes no time getting to the good stuff. Every time I hear this song, I think of playing Guitar Hero all those years ago. (laughs) At 1 minute 13 seconds, an incredible guitar solo begins. The song also exhibits a cool mix of grunge and metal. Overall, a very short length of 2 minutes and 29 seconds means it has very little room for error. But thankfully, it does not disappoint at all, and it really got me excited for the next track for sure. What what do you have to say about it, man? This um, well, this is definitely like you said a way to freaking start this album, dude. I mean, straight up with Lanes just yelling his his scream. Yeah, dude, that's like al- the first thing you you hear. Yeah, along with that guitar, that heavy fat guitar, it perfectly sets the. This the scene and the tone of the the album, you know, it tells you what you're getting into. It does, yeah, dude. Um, no, I totally agree. I said I was talking about I was writing down the the mood of it. You know, it's it, it really gives like this dark, dark like kind of creepy mood as a lot of the other songs in the album do. But I mean, he's, he's, he talks about like you know red skies, you know, digging up human bones. It's it's dark shit, and it, it really, it, it kind of, it just lets you know what you're getting into, like Dude, I said. totally, yeah. And it, it, it's just, it's amazing. I would agree, it is just amazing. No, I think this song's a lot of fun, actually, dude, just to, like, kind of, like... Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's not dark yet. Like, the album gets really dark, you It know? does, but, I mean, it, it lets you know that it's there. It does let you know, dude. It, well, this I like this because it's kind of the introductory track. You know what I mean? This is... There's a reason this song was in Guitar Hero. It's because it, it... First of all, because it rocks. I mean, that's oh, no yeah. doubt about it. I but, actually did not know it was in Guitar Hero. Oh, really yeah, said. dude. I think it's, like, the first one or whatever. It's did you know it was by... Did you know, did you know it was in this album? Or I, I had no idea no? about this album until you brought it up, honestly, earlier today. Okay. But um, I really like. There's a reason it's on guitar. It's because it's a lot of fun. Right. The song's a lot of fun to listen to. Honestly, I think the singer is great. I think it's a lot of fun. I love Lane's vocals. Me too, dude. No, yeah. I'd never really even heard much Alice in Chains until today. So you know, but I think the song's a lot of fun. I loved it. Oh yeah. You know. Damn that river. So, dude, like what I wrote about this song is that the beginning of this track hooked me immediately. It's just these heavy, fat guitars, and then 24 seconds in, what's his name? Lane Lane, Staley. Lane, Lane, Lane Staley. Lane Staley begins singing, and it just matches perfectly with all the guitars. I really like the way the song is mixed, with all the instruments sitting with the singer, where they're kind of equal, you know what I mean? But Mm -hmm. everything also works, too, when it's, like, mixed properly like that. Yeah. At a minute 58 seconds, 
this brief guitar solo is played, and the guitars are always doing something interesting in this song. Oh, yeah. You know, they never stop in this song. It's great. Even in the album, the guitars never stop doing something interesting. Yeah. Um, it's just these great, heavy riffs throughout this entire song. Overall, it definitely rocks. I, I loved it. What do you What do you think, man? Well, I was I was I noticed the one thing that you said how the guitars always do something, and I've listened to this track quite a bit, and not, until now, I never realized some of the small little um, guitar riffs that they put in there to add as like I wouldn't say filler, but but it, nuances. It, yeah, it really fills up the song. And it really adds those empty at those empty ambient spots that would be, yeah. and you know I, I I absolutely love the fat rhythm guitar that they've got going on, dude. Yeah, um, I mean the solo was was clean and it gave off a strong mood. I mean that on top with the fat rhythm, it, it just it was a perfect combination, dude. I love this track, dude. Just for the guitars alone, dude. This track could have had like. I'm not saying the singer sucks or anything. He's really, really good, man. But this track, if it was even really instru- if it was instrumental, it would be great. Yeah. It'd still be great. Oh yeah. yeah. No, dude. Yeah, the singer it'd be singing in it. It just adds better stuff to it. It really does. You know what I mean? Not saying I don't want him in it. I love him in it. But even if he wasn't there and this was all instrumental, yeah, I'd still have a fun time with this dude. Oh yeah. So yeah. Anything else you want to say about it? No, other than that. They go, uh, they go ahead with those dark undertones that they, uh, that the you know that he talk about. He talks about like drowning, drowning someone in a river. You know, my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, other than that, no, that's it. That's it. Rain when I die. So this track, I was noticing that there's a lot of weird and wacky kind of guitar effects in the beginning of this track that kind of make me think of like you know people like vi or you know satriani or um or even frank zappa mm-hmm. do with some of the weird stuff yeah. you know um at a minute and one second the song really gets rolling though and by one minute 12 seconds we're already at that point in every rock album where there are guitar solos that are just soaked in wah pedal you know oh, yeah and um the chorus of this song really shows lane staley's vocal ability and this song Still, I don't know why I wrote this twice, but it has so much wah in it. I guess it's because there's just so much, you <laughs> well, know, I mean, parts in it. it's good, you know? It's so good, dude. It's so good. I want one of his wahs, man. It's probably custom made. It's probably like a $500 wah. Oh, yeah. Dude, probably. It also has these moments with drums and bass and guitar that will just kick ass when you hear them for the first time, for yeah. sure. This song is over six minutes long, but you it will never be boring to you. It's that good. Yeah. What do you think? I thought basically along the same lines as you. Um, it, it comes off with this amazing bass line. I mean, I, I absolutely love Alice in Chains' bass tones that they have in their songs. You know, there's many, many other examples. Like, off, even off the album, you know, even in their untitled yellow album with the the bulldog with with one with one leg missing. Jesus Christ. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's crazy shit, but... Um, no, they. I love their their bass tones that they have going on for them. Um, the extended technique with the guitar, like you were talking about, good shit. The really good shit, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of deep poetic meaning into the writing of the the lyrics and everything. That's. I mean, that's all I really got. I don't know. It's just there's a lot. This is the first time I've ever done this, but. It's 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 just a lot to intake. Yeah, dude. No, for sure, dude. I mean, it's a six minute song too. Oh yeah. It's hard to talk There's about every. About. It's hard to talk about every great thing in a six minute song that's yeah. great. Basically, you yes. know, that's probably the best way to put it. A six minute song that's great, you could almost make a whole video just on that. Yeah. You could. You really could. You know what I mean? I've seen video. I actually, speaking of which, I remember watching a video a while back about um this dude. He was saying how them bones is one of the best songs that he's ever listened to and he start, he talks about how the ener- the energy that they show and you know it, it's clear that they show this amazing energy i agree yeah. so like yeah you you can go off in these long tangents but we're trying to make it a little short but i mean this one's a little longer because you know it's a little bit more of a loose podcast type episode but yeah dude yeah no i totally agree okay yeah me too, dude. No, I love this song, though. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. Yeah. Down in a hole. 
So the beginning of this song is very mellow. You know, it almost feels like a David Gilmour meets um, oh, yeah. Metallica's One. Yeah. And if you love One by Metallica, then this song is for you. So far, this song is the most like a ballad with really stripped back guitars and the vocals are put over them. Probably Definitely. more than in the last few songs. In the last few songs, the vocals sat with the guitars. And also, we, I'd like to mention how heavier the other songs were compared to this one. This one is not that heavy. Oh, yeah, I would totally agree. Yeah. very mellow. The lyrics are also very poetic and well-written in the chorus sections, especially. Yeah. I love the acoustic guitars and the vocal harmonies. And then the harmonies also, they give me this feeling like I'm listening to, almost, to Queen almost. Yeah. Which is always good. They're my fourth favorite band, and they're not going anywhere. I love Queen. In fact, I'm excited to see the movie that's coming out soon. Hmm. Overall, I didn't know that was coming out. Oh, it's so, it looks so good. Overall, this song so far has impressed me the most within the first four tracks. At 5 minutes, 16 seconds, the guitars end the track on quite a high note. Overall, it's like a mix of Nirvana and Pink Floyd and with a bit of Queen sprinkled in. If You know, that's how I would describe it. I agree with everything. The only thing I'd like to add with that is how one, the one thing I noticed with his lyrics is how, how he says he's like down in a hole, and hence the name, but down in a hole. he's dug himself this hole. He, he's feeling so small, you know, as, as quoting the lyrics, but mm-hmm. feeling so small as if like he's lost all his self-love and his self-respect, and he, he, he says he wants to fly, but he can't. Because he's it, it, it's he's dug his hole, and it it really as ridiculous as I'm sounding, it's it actually is very meaningful to me. Totally, dude. Just listen to the song and everything that we're saying. Basically, if you've not heard the song, and now chances are you probably heard the song if you've clicked listen. onto this video. We're already at the 12 minute mark. You probably heard the song. And you just want to hear us talk about it. But um, if you've never heard the song and you're genuinely curious, what Brennan's saying is not very ridiculous at all. I'm saying it in a ridiculous manner, but no. no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah if, right. No, if you listen to it, you're, you'll definitely feel some pain for him. Totally, dude. Yeah, and I'll, and the, throughout this whole album review, I'm gonna be saying it, but there there is a emotion to there this album. There is definitely emotion and pain, and, and you feel something, dude. You really do. Like I'd rather feel something. I've said it like five times when we were writing the review. Yeah. But I feel something when I listen to these songs, and oh, that, yeah. that's the best thing that a musician can give. To a person that's the listener. And and that's that's the art behind writing music is, in my opinion, you know, there's many inputs on how you can view music as art, but I like to look at the art of music as the emotion it gives off and the emotion it gives to the listener. And it, it really just gives someone to, like, connect to the writer and be like, I have those same struggles. Mm-hmm. Not to say I've dug in myself a hole, but... I mean, but we've all kind of dug it, you know. We, yeah, we've all kind just, of dug that way, though, you know. They, Alice in Chains, really speaks out to the pain and emotion of the viewers. Of the viewers, for sure, dude. Yeah, it doesn't even have to be something that extreme, dude. It could just be like you know, anything. We all go through some sort of low oh, yeah. moment, you know what I mean? And to see that Alice kind of like um, communicates that. It kind of just brings them up, a, you know, a, a, a peg, just from not being just oh, a yeah. great rock group. But it brings them up to being good people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. That's just how it feels. Like, I love Alice in Chains now on an emotional level. I don't just love their music. I think their music's great. That's the thing about writing these reviews is you dig into the music instead of just, like, listening to the song. Like, you actually respect the writing and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I listened to this album a million times. But I'm now starting to just realize how much... Of it, I love. I mean, it is a masterpiece. I would say it's a masterpiece, too, for sure. Oh, yeah. Sick Man. So with this song, I would definitely say that the drums set the stage here. And then some heavy, kind of some 41-esque guitars get thrown in. Kind of well, after yeah. the Some 41 could have been influenced by them, too. I could see it, dude, yeah. Overall, the song's way more somber than most of their songs, even on this album. Which, you know, that might turn some people off, but really it's totally fine by me. Because mm-hmm. at least there's something to say there. Oh, yeah. You know, I really got to applaud, though, Sean Kinney on drums. He really holds this song up, in my opinion. He is an amazing drummer, yeah. Yeah, dude. I think the singing is okay. You know, it's not as fun as the other tracks. However, it's really, maybe it's not supposed to be. Maybe that's the intention. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not every song in the album is like them bones where it's fun to listen to and, you know, fun to dance to and all that stuff. It could have been the intention of the singer to, you know, not make them like, like, maybe you're not really supposed to be having fun listening to it. Yeah. You know, definitely, though, it feels more philosophical. Oh, yeah. In the lyrics. And at three minutes and 30 seconds, the guitar and the vocals align. And then at 350, the drums go back and they impress me once more. Overall, so far, yeah, it's my least favorite song. Doesn't know. make it a bad song. Either. Doesn't at all, no. no. That's not even saying it's bad. It's just like, I like to have fun, and I like philosophical music. Right, right. And I think there's a time for both, you know? This song, you know, I'm not saying I don't like philosophical music, because everybody here has probably listened to my Steve Vai reviews, and his lyrics are very philosophical. You know what I mean? And I think that... That can really push an average song to being a great song. Yeah. If the lyrics are incredible. You know, you can't have an album where, I mean, this album's pretty damn close, but you can't have an album where every single song meets your expectations. Not at all. No. That's I a- mean, that's just extremely. I mean, sure, there might be some, but that is extremely hard. Mm hmm. You know, it also depends on the, the listeners' opinions, too. It does. I mean, I. God. I mean, I, I love Alice in Chains, but, I mean, I I have some songs that aren't my favorite. Though totally fine. My impressions of Sick Man, I haven't actually listened to this one too much, but I personally, like I said, in to people's opinions, I was actually blown away by this song. I loved, I absolutely loved the drums in the beginning. Yeah, dude. And he holds them up, dude, in the song, I would say. Yeah, and I, let me just read what I have. I just like to... You know, appreciate how good, you know, Sean is. He's at, really good. He's, he's extremely good. Dude, I also yeah. like I like the haze that they give off in this, and the hazy and the dark and, you know, the it's just it's sick. Hence the name. Yeah. No, it totally is, dude. You were comparing but, this song to when you had the flu. No, yeah, I had the flu <laughs> about last year, and it was the worst that I've ever been. Where I would just be like, I'd be like asleep but awake at the same time i'd be walking but i'd feel like asleep and really hazed as if i was like high it was crazy and and then you'd get these points like in the song where it just gets very aggressive where i would get like these sharp pains and like just be in agony and then it just go back to being hazy which is why i liked this song so much because i connected with it a little bit i mean you know sure everybody's had the flu but I mean, I've actually never had the flu. I no? think no, never. But no, no I know what you mean. Was, everybody's it, everybody's been sick like that, though. I think. I think it was. I don't know if it was a different strain of flu at the time, but it was. It was bad. I mean, it was the worst. Like one of the worst things you probably ever felt. It was the worst sickness I've ever had. Jeez. Oh God. Not much to where I remember it. Yeah, yeah, dude. No, for sure. That sucks, dude. But the song, thankfully, does not suck like the flu, which is great. Yeah, it may it might have not been your favorite, but that's all right. That's totally fine, dude. No, yeah. I'll, I really think that it's totally fine. You know? Yeah. It's not bad. I don't think it's a bad song. It's well, not. No, of course. You know, if you if anybody here is a listener of my, you know, Steve Vai Sex and Religion review, you already know that my least favorite song is Pig. So that's totally <laughs> fine. Yeah, that's the name of the song. Is it, is you don't like that song? I hate that song. <laughs> I really do. Just because you don't like a song in an album does not mean you hate the artist. No, not God, at all. God, not no, at dude, all. dude. I, I would, fe- I would probably kill myself if I ever like admitted <laughs> that I hated Steve Vai. Oh yeah. I'd totally be selling my own beliefs like down the toilet, basically. <laughs> if I ever like said that, I could never. It can't happen. Yeah, so if you're listening to this, don't think it's a bad song. It's just his opinion, which is all right. You yeah. mean, you have opinions too, you know. As I say in the beginning of every single review, dude, we all got them. And if you don't like, if you don't like it or you don't agree, you can talk about it in the comments below, dude. Absolutely, absolutely. Rooster. So for this one, I wrote that if you like phaser effect, you know, like the MXR phase ninety effect, then you will definitely love the intro to this song. At about twenty seven seconds, you get this beautiful sounding vocal harmony. And um, the guitarists and vocals are put on the forefront here. This song is definitely more stripped back up until two minutes and eight seconds when the heavy guitars come in and will probably blow out your speakers. The solos here, just like in Damn the River, are loaded with wah. This song really screams with emotion. I love that. I'd rather have an emotional track that brings up greater questions and makes me feel something than just a bunch of flashy guitar effects 
and tricks and just a bunch of nonsense, just a bunch of nothing. What do you think about that? No, oh, yeah, I agree. Um, this this is like it, it's it's probably the most hazy in the song so totally, far. Totally, totally. So which, far. which I totally dig. I love I love haze. I love myself a good haze. Um, yeah, dude, haze. But um, no, the the haze and the the guitar and we combined with the harmonic vocals, it's beautiful. You know, uh, I mean, this song was, I, I know a little bit of history because I looked it up a couple weeks ago. Uh, it was written by Jerry Cantrell, the, um, I probably said his last name wrong, but the guitarist for Alice in Chains. He wrote it about his father who was in the Vietnam War, and they used to call him Rooster because his hair used to kind of stick up like the rooster's freaking whatever. Yeah, I don't even know what that's called, dude. Is that part, is that feathers or is that actually skin? No, it's like the little red shit. Um, but yeah. no, yeah, they used to call him Rooster, and I don't know if he died, and that's why he wrote the song, or if he did it because he loved him. Um, you know, either, that was my water bottle. Um, either way, um, it, it just, it shows how much, like, love that they put into it. No, I totally believe it, you dude. You know, writing a song about someone, you know, peop- people do it all the time, but. Look at Taylor Swift, that bitch has a career of it, you know? Yeah, but I mean, like, when you put real emotion into it it really speaks you know, i believe it gonna, dude yeah. we're gonna say how much emotion this song had we're gonna say that a million times i could say it till i'm blue in the face dude that i would much rather have a song that brings up these greater questions and story and emotions right then so, again just some flashy nonsense so yeah if you get tired of us saying that click it's, off don't don't click off don't this click is, off no, keep, no, the, keep just... the tab open just turn it down <laughs> That's yeah. all I want. No. Just keep the tab open no, and turn it, it down. It, we say it because we mean it a ton. We, I mean, it's 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 beautiful stuff that they have. But it no. is. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about um, uh, see here the you know the 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 wooings that they do. Um, I I love that that a simple adding. They do that in the beginning and the end of the song. Um, in the unplugged version, they do it a lot more. Um, they do it on top of the soloing of the guitars. It it just, it's really just like a an homage to his father, and I, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, dude. No, I love my father, dude. Everybody loves their father. Well, unless they're a dick. Yeah, unless Which they're I a dick. Which I hope to God yeah. they're not. Cause... Unless one of them's a dick. If the kid's a dick, then he probably doesn't love his father. If the dad's a dick, the kid probably doesn't love his father. I hope everyone in here loves their yeah, father. Yeah, I hope every one of these viewers, <laughs> you know, yeah. right now, like all 12 of them <laughs> that I get in each hey, video. Hey, 12 is better than nothing. 12, interesting. I always say this, dude. I say this to my mom. I say this to my dad. That I would much rather have 12 people viewing my videos that are genuinely into it than, like, 500 people that just don't give a shit and just want to hate on it, basically. Yeah. You I know? Mean, I, I would totally take 12 people over just 500 people that, and you know, spew off a bunch of negativity, for sure. And this is, you know, a music review, but I do want to get into it. Like, I mean, it's fun for us, so, you know... If you think it's cringy, I mean, I don't know why you would because we're just two, two, yeah, yeah, we're two, just two dudes, dudes talking about we're music. Talk about music. We're just chilling. But no, um, I mean, if you're not digging it, that's okay. But I mean, it's it's good for us because we're having fun doing it. And that's what freaking counts, you know? Yeah, but I do, I do appreciate the few that are listening, though, ge- that genuinely mean. That genuinely matter, you know. Yeah. But no, I agree. Yeah, Rooster, sure. Rooster, one of my favorite songs. Rooster's in the album. great. Just the greater questions, the emotions. It was, to, it was to the point where I actually said, "I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I can't speak anymore because I, how much I love the song." Yeah, dude, and we got I a, do, we I got a time it. quota too. Sure, sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine, dude. All right. Junkhead. So this next one, Junkhead, is possibly one of the most messed up songs in the album. He talks about having the best night of his life. Because his friend turned him over to an old favor, uh, hence, like, the drug dealer. Who, the singer? Know. I don't know if it was particularly the singer. Um, I don't know who wrote this song, uh, which member of the band, but I'm going to assume Lane Staley for the current moment because of his drug problems. But he talks about how he's had the best night he's ever had in a while because of this dealer and the drugs he's had. And it, it it's really scary to see because of, how Lane's drug problem was a serious, like, a serious problem. Like, it really was. And Yeah, dude. He was, I don't know how many other drugs, but I know heroin was his main one. Looking into the future in April 5th, 2002, uh, him dying of the heroin overdose. Um, the date being kind of weird because Kurt Cobain had also died April 5th of 1994. 
two of the biggest grunge singers of the 90s dying on the same day. It's kind of coincidental. But this song really kind of just scares me because of how, how, how this shit can get to you. It totally does, dude. It's almost like a look into, the, like, how do I say it? Into that, like, crystal ball almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? And as you said while we were writing the review, you said this song is a cry for help. Yes. For sure. You said oh, this song yeah. is a cry for help. Yeah, I would believe it, dude. Just if you listen to the lyrics, it's tragic, dude. In fact, what I wrote about this song is that this track really feels like something written by Kurt Cobain. It's so tragic. Yeah. You know, I'm guessing the song has to do with Lane Staley's, as you said, problems with addiction of throughout course. his life. The song is actually very tragic if you listen to the lyrics. Unfortunately, Lane's life was taken, as you said, in April 5th, 2002, right, right. from drugs, mainly heroin. This song almost makes you want to cry because, again, it's tragic. Yeah. The same time, however, it's probably the most artful track on it the really album. Is. There's so much art to this song, you know, and that's not us being snobs or anything like that. But, but no, yeah, there's there's real art in this. There is real art, dude. Um, I'd also like to say how back to the drug thing is, um, you, you know, the title is Junkhead, as you know, they call them junkies. He says, he says in here how he says, he says, he says, uh, he can see how the hypocrites can title and label the stoners, junkies and freaks all in the same label as like terrible people, but which, you know, it's screwed up, but. People, people have their different ends. And he also yeah. talks about how, well, he doesn't talk, he says how he he does it a lot. And he does it a lot, and he does it a lot. And he says, he states this many times And that's where I think it's the, that's where you said you think it's the cry for help. It is. It really is a cry for help. And it, it shows how he won't stop, you know, unless he gets help. And it's clear that he didn't stop over time when, in, you know, when 1992, when this album was made. All the way up to 2002, 10 years later, you know, he never stopped. No, he did not, unfortunately, dude. No, dude, like, if anybody listening to this does have a drug problem, please get help. Seek help, yeah. Seek help, for sure. Serious shit. As good as it might feel to you, it's not good for There's you. always something better. Yeah. You know what you I mean? You can always get high off life. High off life, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But no, in all seriousness, please, we do not want to lose any of you. You are very important to us. Absolutely not. Of course. Dirt. So I really love the intro to this song. It's just exotic. And if you've heard my Fire Garden review, one of the 12 um, listeners, then you'd know that I love exotic sounding music, especially metal. Yeah. And you can agree with this. This song sounds so Indian. It's very, yeah. It, <laughs> it well, sounds so Indian. Yeah, it's it incredible. definitely has some Indian influence. Yeah. Um, you know, just, just, the, just the different vibes that it, it gives off right at the start. Oh, yeah. Dude. Very different from the other tracks. Well, my favorite part about this song, this is my favorite song, by the way, guys. Completely my favorite in the whole album. I knew it when I heard it for the first time, and I know it now. This is my favorite song in the album. I like how they commit to the exotic mm -hmm. Mixolydian modes instead of just using it as a gimmick. Wouldn't yeah. you agree that they oh, really yeah. commit to it? Um, this is so far my favorite track of the album, and it will probably be my favorite going on. It's definitely an incredible title track, and at 2 minutes and 55 seconds, a really thick guitar solo begins. This song is like a hazy metal style, yet it does this balancing act perfectly. I think this song is just amazing. Yeah, and again, to the um, the opinions, it's actually not my favorite song. Okay. But like we said, it, I respect other people's opinions. Yeah, it's, dude. A, it's a great song, but yeah, it's dude. not my favorite. Um, I do really like the the riff though at the beginning. It's, Dude, that riff at the beginning sold it's, it's me. It's really good. That riff sold me. I couldn't even tell you how much it sold me. I remember when I first heard it. Oh yeah. I couldn't yeah, wait you to were finish like, it. You you digged into that. Dude, I was so, like, oh, you know. So I um I did like one thing that they did though. How it is one of the grungiest songs. There's there's another song later that's the grungiest in the album. But don't you mean the edgiest? Now isn't right. that the word they use now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because grunge is and edge is bad now. So, but grunge whatever. Grunge and edge is bad now. So, yeah. I, grunge is supposed to be very like dirty, messy, and stuff. Yeah. Yet this album 
gets the yin yang as it gets like one side of grunge yet the other side of like metal you know like yeah dude set. oh yeah as i say in this it's it gets the balancing act perfectly the, the lyrics in this are extremely grungy as he talks you know he talks about like like he wants to taste dirt in his mouth you know hence the name dirt dirt i don't, I don't know how many times i've said hence but hence. I'm, I'm serious i agree dude and yet with these grungy lyrics with a very melodic clean solos and like guitar riffs that that like metal bands usually have it goes together so well like peanut butter and jelly it, it really does it does go together it, you know, it, like if there's one thing i took from um, infinity war it's that everything has balance as thanos yeah. said when he was <laughs> balancing that knife on little was it on little gamora's hands i don't know probably it was some shit like that but he was saying that everything needs balance in the world well this this album is balanced Perfectly. Oh, yeah. Thanos would love it. <laughs> Thanos would love this shit. Thanos would love this shit because he's like, it's balanced. Conf- <laughs> confirmed. Um, Thanos would not snap Alice, for it. Alice and Chains fan. They live. They would live. They would. They would there live. <laughs> they would li- totally live. God smack. So, um, I like how before we you played this song for me, the first time I played it, um, I like how you thought I wouldn't really like it. Well, yeah, it's... You know, because of the tone shifting of the voice. That's why I thought it would turn you off. Yeah, dude. No, no, no. I wrote um, on this track. Here's what I wrote. I wrote, this song begins with heavy guitars, and then the vocals come in, and the pitch shift really did kind of throw me off, you know? Yeah. With, um, with what's his face? I'm sorry. Lane Staley. Lane Staley's what's voice. His what's his face? Well, good thing you didn't say what's his face to Kurt Cobain because he doesn't have a face. Oh. oh uh, as much hey. as I love Kurt Cobain, I love him. Yeah, he dude. He does not have a face anymore. No. Did they cremate him? I'm just curious. Um, I, I could look it up. Yeah, dude. I'll just keep talking about the album, okay? Or the song. Sure. Um, but basically, with the whole pitch shifting thing, I th- it threw me off for a sec, but I really learned to love it. Of course, the wah is back for the chorus parts. And of course, it's just as good as ever. You know, the wah pedal. Yeah. At 2 minutes and 26 seconds, a really kick-ass guitar solo begins... And after this, the singer comes back with all his pitch shifting goodness. Holy Overall, shit, dude, Kurt Cobain had an open casket. Oh, what? Oh, oh, that's yeah, what? dude. Don't click on that. Get creamy. <laughs> <laughs> Did uh, Kurt Cobain get creamy? That was in the Google <laughs> suggested. <laughs> Did Kurt Cobain um, get creamy? You know what? I'm gonna stop there. All right. Yeah, let's stop it. Let's we, stop. Got, we got we got God <laughs> smack to talk about. Okay. So, yeah. Let me just start over. Go ahead. It begins with heavy guitars, vocals come in, and the pitch shift threw me off. Of course, the wah pedal is back for the chorus parts, and it's obviously just as great as ever because you know how I feel about the wah in this album. The wah's great. It's great. The drums are also great, though. Oh, yeah. In this song, for sure. At 2 minutes and 26 seconds, a really kick-ass guitar solo begins. And after this, the singer comes back with all his pitch-shifting glory. Overall, this song's more experimental, which is actually why I really like it a lot. That Yeah, it is probably the most different out of the album. I mean, it's it's the, the most grungy due to, like, the, the uh, guitars being, like, almost out of tune but in tune at the same time. Yeah, it's, you were talking about that. No, dude, I was saying, like... so cool. I, you were telling me about that, and I was telling you, um... Dude, I, I think you can achieve that if you have, like, a chorus Pedals, pedal. Right, right. A chorus pedal, but you turn the rate all the way down. Yeah, it was... It, it detunes your guitar it, just enough. It's such a cool thing to think of. Mm-hmm. Like, to have it tuned down a little bit, but tuned enough to where it fits. Totally. So, it sounds like almost as there's two tones of the guitar. One's detuned and one's tuned perfectly. But then you go into Lane's voice as the, you know, the pitch shift uh, yeah he's doing some uh, <laughs> that type shit, you know yeah. but i love that combination it's so dirty and like it's 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 amazing i i love that dude yeah and i, love I wanted to talk about the drums at 105 i absolutely love them i mean they are like extremely powerful and they they really they really just hit you and that's when he stops the pitch shift um as well but then he goes straight back into it totally does yeah but i mean it, it it was one of the, one of my favorites. I love it's this the most song. entertaining in my opinion. One I the, love this song, dude, just because it's so different. It's very different. It's so different, dude. It, it's almost like it doesn't fit with the rest of the album, 
Yeah. It's it, kind of it like would fit more into their um their yellow untitled album if you ever listen to that. Was that more experimental stuff? It is. It no, it's more grungy. Okay. They yeah. have a lot of like um if if the viewers listening there's um I'll have make su- good suggestions uh brush brush away um and uh, again I like the song again a lot um grind is another good one um those are s- sludge factory that's sludge another good sludge factory yeah sludge factory it's really good it's very hit, fat riffs like you like know. like fat sludge like fat sludge no but like you know fat riffs like in um what was it Dan that river oh yeah know? yeah yeah that was that that, that had some fat yeah no riffs, they yeah. Th- those are some great albums, but it, I, I um, I'm gonna say Angry Chair. We're not there yet. Godsmack would fit perfectly in that, so it's kind of cool to see what they were already getting into. For sure. As they as they're experimented. Untitled. This song's definitely more of an interlude, kind of like Wukong from you know Vi's Fire Garden and all that shit like that. I'm not familiar with that, but yes. You know Wukong. I I use that as my opening for when I played oh. at the Rock Hall. Shit, you did. I did. I did. I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. There you go. This song, Interlude, Untitled, is loaded with a bunch of samples over a guitar track. Overall, it's definitely okay, but it's not really a song. But it definitely does work for the grungy nature of the album. And also, one little thing to add, I, I adore that this experimental track of Godsmack is immediately followed by an experimental interlude like this. I, I adore that. It's, it's genius. It is kind of genius. It's no, cool to see that they're, like, trying to expand what they're what they're doing. You know, they have their set sound of the album Dirt. But if you look at their other their other album, um, oh, what's it called? God damn, why can't I think of the name? I know this name off the top of my head, but I'm having the... But their, their first album, you know, it is... It's completely different sound. They were did, did more of a glam metal ish type of. It was it was way different. My God, I didn't um, know that. It's not really like glam metal. It's glammy kind of. Is it like kind of like I don't know, man? It's, is it like is it kind of like um, shit? What what artist could you compare it to? So you know how Pantera kind of had a different sound their first album. Yes, I do know that sound. It's kind of like that. Oh, um, okay. I mean, it's not too too much like that, but um. But I know what you mean. I can totally know what you mean, though. Yeah. Oh, right here. Their um their first album. I don't know why it's hitting me. It's just it's just not getting me right now. Um, but anyways, yeah, it, the interlude is like. It's 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 almost a little small art form. That they did there, um, and I really like it because it's it's really freaking freaking scary, dude. Yeah. Um, like, it's it's got all this atonal stuff, and I think scientists facelift. That's facelift. What it is. facelift. I don't okay, know why. Yeah. Facelift. Okay, so yeah, facelift was has a completely different tone than dirt. And then if you go ahead, you you look in each album, they they show their little experimental things. And in in dirt, they they do it with untitled and Godsmack, and it leads straight into the, um, you know, their their untitled, um, yellow album. See, that's that's what it looks like right there. Oh, okay. So gotcha. yeah, it's just called Alice in Chains. So, but it's it's really kind of a creepy like vibe that they're going off with untitled. I said um, the inter, inter, interlude for the album Dirt is really goes along with the tone of the album that is given off. Very angry and sinister with hard, heavy guitar strums and very uneasy sounding guitar riff that later comes in with laughter and like a deep, creepy voice. It's really, really creepy and it, it literally makes me uncomfortable, which in my opinion is an art form as it gives me a certain feeling. It makes you feel something and as again, I will say it more times than I need to, it, you felt something. Yeah. It wasn't a bunch... It, yes, it was a bunch of nonsense, but it wasn't a bunch of nonsense at the same time. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like... It, it gave you something to think about. Yeah. It was memorable because it was so different. Yeah. I mean, I look at all these other bands, too. They don't really do this. You know, I mean... A lot of rock bands, dude, from from like this era do not do that. No. No. I know another... Like, for instance, um, Nevermind came out the same year that Dirt came out... No, as never mind, an amazing album. I yeah, dude, I love that. A album lot of people regard a lot of people regard it as a ten out of ten, dude. It, oh, I, 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 I would say it's a ten out of ten. It is okay. You know, Nirvana being my most favorite band, um, never mind, kind of covered up 
dirt in the media. Alice in Chains did not get much publicity. I was talking to my dad about it because this was one of his favorite albums back then. You know, he was in college at the time and he was saying how this this was one of his favorite albums that he, that he listened to at all time. And he loved Nirvana and, you know, he loved he loved Soundgarden. He loved all these. Okay. But he told me how Alice in Chains never got too much recognition because of these other bands like Soundgarden and Nirvana were kind of blowing up in the media for the Seattle scene. Yeah. Right? Oh, for sure, dude. Yeah. This kind of happened with the same thing with Melvin's. Which I love the Melvins, but they kind of got covered up. You know, Kurt Cobain was actually extremely involved in Melvins. Yo, the, guys, actually, yo, viewers, smash that like button for the Melvins, actually. Yeah, go check some of their songs out, like um, Revolve and um, Honey Bucket. Those are two, two awesome, awesome songs by them. But you know, Dirt kind of had a bad timing to be released. Yeah, dude, it was totally overshadowed. Like I don't oh, know, it was definitely yeah. overshadowed by Nevermind. For sure. You know, and that's not really a bad thing. It's not. It's not a bad thing. It's just an unfortunate thing it for is. Alice in Chains. It is. Yes. It's just a little unfortunate. That's fine. You know, I know we've gotten off on a bit of a tangent, but overall, Untitled is fun. It's interesting. And yes, it is scary. It's really scary because there's all, all this atonal stuff, and you hear a bunch of samples, and you hear some guy saying, I am Iron Man, and a laughing guy. and He actually says, I am God. Does he actually say that? Yeah, man. You want me to do a little sample? Yeah, it's no? okay. No, it's okay, no? dude. I want to get it taken down. Yeah. Hate to feel. So the guitar harmonies begin the track, and it almost sounds like a throwback to the first track, Them Bones, you know, with the way mm. the singer kind of sings. It's definitely hazier, but it is so similar for sure. At 1 minute and 39 seconds, a cool harmonized guitar solo begins, and it kind of reminds me of um, David Gilmore again. I know in earlier in the review I talked about David Gilmore and Pink Floyd. Mm. The lyrics are very well written and interesting here. At 3 minutes 11 seconds, a cool guitar solo starts, and it is actually recorded where one guitar plays out of the left side of the speakers, while another guitar plays out the right side of the speakers, and then they answer each other. Yeah. Overall, I think that part kind of saves the song for me. This song is probably the m- most ununique kind of how do, what's the word I'm looking, formulated song it's on, very similar to their others on the album you know it's just my opinion I think no, the song I is I think I don't know man I think this song is actually my least favorite now that I've thought about it it's I it's it it can be your like I agree it's 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 not the best but I still like the song. Yeah, dude, no, no, no. Just because a song sounds like other great songs doesn't mean it's yes. bad. It just means so, that it's a little bit... It's no. not unique anymore. So, it's not fresh anymore. I agree, though. Um, it, it's very similar sounding to some of their other stuff. As like, It's basically like everything combined into one. It's the greatest hits version of a song, basically. C- kind of, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the that? one thing that caught my mind is um, that they kind of like... Bom, 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 bom. So they they kind of they kind of do that and it's like it's not like a continuous like, ba 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 no no, you know you know that was, that was um, angry chair but we're gonna get into that next but, they, it's they they kind of take small like shortcuts and it's it's very, I don't know what the word is like it's in your face kind of saying, you know it's progressive it's it's very progressive it's it is like progressive offbeat. No. There's a lot of like odd time signatures in this song. I remember. Yeah, but you know? the, the the general overall is kind of is kind of just similar. I, I did like how it sped up at the end of the track though. That was kind of cool. It's yeah, dude, no, no, and that, that guitar solo, that guitar solo really it, it, it was that good. Got me. I love that guitar that, solo. That guitar solo was actually one of my favorites in the album. Yeah, dude, no, that that solo saves the it, song. It did save the that song. So, that solo kind of holds up the song. It does. You know what I mean? Because you got this song that's a little bit... Uh, I'll go as far as say it's kind of boring. Because it yeah. sounds so much like it. Now, it depends on when you listen to it. If you listen to that song first on the album... Yeah, it'll be great. But, I mean, we sat here and listened to the whole album like From straight. first to last. And, I mean, there's no problem with the song. But sometimes, you know, I'm no song like ex- like professional writer. But from a viewer or listener standpoint... It gets a little old after a little while. I mean, I mean, listen here. We're we're like we're like 
greasing this baby up. We love this album. Yeah, no, we, we, are, grease we are not saying we do not like this album. Yeah, dude, no, this album. I mean, we are not dissing Alice in This Chains. is almost a perfect album. We are not dissing the writers in any way, but they could have changed it up a little more for this one. They could have had more moments like that guitar solo in the album. Yeah. Or not in the album, I mean in the song. Yeah. They could have had more moments like that, dude, where like the singer sings a line and then through the left speaker. Yeah. And then through the right speaker answers the line. They could have done more of that. They could have made that like the theme of this song, you know? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, they did not. And they Which, just saved it for the solo. It's okay. I mean, because we still got something. We still got there, something here. There is plenty of gems in this album so it's okay are... it's okay if there's a little slip up this is my first time hearing this album and i love it so i mean if you're the if you're and you like this song and you disagree that's that's okay it's totally um, fine i don't you know i don't want to put you down and tell you that your opinion's wrong because yeah, no. no no opinion i is am wrong. i am one of the biggest grunge fans i mean i i love everything in the grunge yeah um so i'm no way this you like it. everything grunge under the sun <laughs> yeah yeah no okay. for sure dude Angry Chair. All right, so this one is actually one of my all-time favorites. I've listened to this track a lot. I love this track, too. It is one of the scariest songs I've listened to. I mean, I, I mean I'm just going to go to say, like, you can have scary songs without you sounding like a drowning pig going... I'm looking at you, Crown the Empire. I'm looking at you, Wage War. Yeah, so I showed him the band um, Gorgoroth. I mean, I respect them. Yeah, dude, I respect any good musician for sure. Yeah, dude. I do not really like them. We music. just threw a lot of we threw a lot of shit at like you know Wage War and Crown the Empire, and I'm happy their careers are great. I'm really happy yeah. that they have great. I saw you know Crown the Empire at Warp Tour the other day. Yeah. You know what? I'm not a big fan of that music, but I will say that their career in music is going a lot better than mine so you know it's all right so it's no, totally fine yeah like i showed them the norwegian or i showed them the norwegian death metal black metal band gorgoroth and i was saying like how their shit's scary but like you can do it without getting like crazy like everything so this song's very slow and it's it's got a drum beat it starts off with a drum beat and then the, the this this very clean kind of um reverb guitar comes in and it's very very like sinister sounding and i love it and then to, to hit on top of that with the icing is um lane staley he he sings in an almost monotone voice that makes he, it scary too it really does and but what makes it scarier is how he starts talking about like he's sitting in a chair in a dark room with shadows dancing all around him and there's a man that with a clay face that's molding into him and then he he also starts changing the mold of his face again, and and then he starts saying, "Little boy made a mistake, possibly indicating a bad childhood." I don't know, but it is a sad, scary song. I will say it right now. Yeah, dude. No, I totally. What I wrote about this song is I wrote drums and guitar really set the stage here with a cool drum groove in the beginning and some sweet vocal parts, dude. The guitar has a cool little modulated vibe machine or modulated delay. Which I really kind of like, yep. dude. Yeah, I like that a lot. Lane's vocals are awesome here. His vocals are really put to work. You know, I feel like it takes a strong man to show restraint. Yeah. Like he does. Oh, yeah. He could have easily kind of went crazy, but then the atmosphere is lost. Yeah. He, the atmosphere is lost. At 2 minutes and 27 seconds, an awesome guitar solo starts that feels a bit loose and free. Kind of like, you know... Um, he didn't really have a time signature. He just kind of just did it. And it was sounded sounded great, you know? Oh, yeah. And once it's done, we're back to the vocals. The incredible vocals. Yeah, Lane, he's got an incredible voice. I will say, though, the guitars and the drums steal the show on this one. Now, overall, this song is definitely up there with my favorites. Like, um, what did I say was my favorite? Like You like Dirt. Dirt, yeah, that's what and it was. And you liked um, Them Bones. I did like Them Bones, dude. That song's fun. You know, just because the drums and the guitar, they really impressed me, I think. It's very good. And then also in this song, you get this 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 main part of really, like, kind of dark, gloomy, scary sound. And then you get small sections where he says, I don't mind the air. And then he goes on, and a little later he says he can't get it anywhere. Saying, like, he, he loves to be free and he, he wants to get out. But he just he can just not do it, which is scary to see, because you know you want something, 
but you just you can't find it. Yet it's always there, right in front it's of you. It's always yeah. I mean, this song is poetic. It really is. This you know? song is art, dude. I love this song. This no. song blew me away. Again, everybody, um, viewers, this is the first time I've heard this album, and I'm in love with it. I'm definitely in love with it, guys. Are you gonna be listening to this after? I dude, I'll listen to some of these songs after for sure. Like I'll oh, listen yeah. to this one after. Yeah. You know, I'll probably listen to this one and tomorrow. Like dirt. I love dirt. Yeah. Dirt. <laughs> oh God. That song sounds so Indian. I don't even like, you know. I love how you describe it as Indian. It does, dude. No, it sounds like it, it was written on a sitar, you know. Sitars are freaking cool. The, the Doors, they use a sitar a yeah. lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Vi uses a sitar. A lot of those, there's a lot of cool um, 70s bands that use George sitar. George Harrison used a sitar. Did he? You know about that? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, dude. But anyway, this song's great. Listen to it now. Keep our tab open. Turn it down, turn ours down, listen to it so that you can still have our tab Great open. Song. Great song. Wood. So, so the, the final track on the album. I would also like to say this is Wood with spelled W-O-U-L-D, not W-O-O-D. You perverts. <laughs> you perverts. I asked my um my bandmate, Zach, he um he's like one of Allison Chain's biggest fans. And I'm like, hey, can you play the, uh, he, he plays bass. I'm like, hey, can you play the bass intro to Wood? He's like, I don't know that song. I'm like, what? Dude, come on. And I'm, he's like, I don't know. And I'm like, W-O-U-L-D, Wood? You don't, by Alice in Chains? He's like, oh, Wood. He said, I thought you were talking about W-O-O-D. No. I like how that made the difference of whether he knew it or not. Yeah, well, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Whatever. Well, I mean, what's the first thing you hear when, when you hear a song title named Wood? Anyways, yeah, this out al- this this song I have like I didn't even write anything because it is th- th- one of the best on the album. This guy told me he could talk about it for hours. I, I could. We're I could make a whole new hour video about. We're this. almost at the first hour though, man. That's Which is impressive. awesome. This is our first kind of podcast video. We're gonna be doing a little bit more if that's fine with you. I'd love it, dude. No, dude, I totally love do it. Some more music podcasts. We might even do some video game podcasts later. I'd love video, dude. No, that sounds like a dream come true, dude. I All don't. Right. I'd love to do it. So let's get into it. This time, it's drums and bass that are at the forefront, just like on the last song was drums and guitar. Yes. The vocals are definitely catchy and emotional, as they've been for the rest of the album, you know. I would say that this song, it does the end the album very beautifully. It's very somber, and it's beautiful. Yes. And then at two minutes and five seconds, a beautiful guitar solo begins, and really there is a weird... There's like a bleakness to it. It's mm. very bleak, but somehow... The way that um, Laney, uh, Lane Staley, Lane Staley, I'm sorry, Laney, the way he sings it though, it makes it kind of hopeful yeah. at the same time. Because of just the lyrics are so bleak, yet if you sing them the right way, there's a bit of an underlying hope to them, you know. Hopefully, overall, this song really just wraps the album up nicely in a neat little package. I think it does. This this is one of my favorite album or. or songs in the album um my, i do however like the unplugged version of wood better i haven't um, heard that yet it's oh it's so it's so good um but i mean the reason i asked my my bandmate zach to play it on the bass is because it is my favorite bass riff of all time it's so like fat and it's so clean it's it is it is it is just it's it's awesome. Brennan <laughs> Brennan is shedding a tear, I, guys. I, I have tears going down my face. You can't right now. see it, but I can. But no, it it's it's beautiful. That's, I would that's totally all agree. I gotta say. It's, I, it I it could, wraps it up. Man. I could go on for hours. Yeah, dude. Well just like how you said there's a whole twelve minute or whatever video of a dude talking about them bones. Yeah. You could probably make a twelve minute video talking about this song. I could make a twenty four hour video about this song. It's where you recite the lyrics of the song. It's where I go into every single word he says and what it means. Is it? And, yeah. then, and then I go into the guitar riffs, the music theory behind everything, the drum rhythm. It's a, it is good though. It is a great song. I love this song. He loves that song. <laughs> he really yeah. does. No, no, for real though. I actually like Angry Chair a little bit more. I like Angry Chair but a lot. Yeah. Would it, uh, the reason I love this song is because it. It brought me into this album. It brought me into this album, and it really showed me how freaking amazing these writers are and, and how amazing performers they Was are. Was this the first song you ever heard on the album? Um, That'd be on weird. the album, I think the, f- the first song I listened to, 
I think I think what I did is I just went into Spotify because I knew they were good. I've listened to songs. I in this in the album Facelift they have a song called um, "Man in a Box." It's um, it's good, but it's their most popular song, and it's it's actually not my favorite. You would actually really like to use the talk box in it. Oh, sweet! I'll, I'll actually show you this after the review's done. If you Please. haven't listened to it, it's a great song. I love this song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not my favorite. Um, I like this song a lot, dude, but no, it is not my favorite. I think that goes to either Dirt or Angry Chair. Yeah. So that was our review, if you want to wrap it up here. Okay, yeah, no. Everybody, thank you so much. If you pulled through for the whole, we're already at 55 minutes and 14 seconds. If every one of you have pulled through, we thank you very much yes, thank you i mean you know this makes us happy and if it makes you entertained that's even better that is yeah. even better dude so. yeah because we like to do it Absolutely. you've liked to do it this is your first oh. time doing something Hell yeah, like this dude. this was fun it was dude. great it was awesome anyway guys if you really enjoyed this leave a like comment your thoughts on the album dirt and, and if you really want to subscribe it yes. means a whole lot to us and don't forget to listen to the full album do not forget if, to If you to have it. not listened to it yet, I'm assuming you have because you're going into the video saying dirt review. Dirt review and, <laughs> you, and you get a dirt just, review. Just a picture of, uh, of dirt from the ground. Dirt from the ground. And then we're going to review the ground dirt. But no, That's just right. kidding. No. But no, actually in the, in the not description, in the comment section, I do put a, um, a link to the whole playlist of the whole album. Yeah, so, so we'll put time stamps on to which song will be where in the, in the video. Definitely. But no, guys, thank you so much for sticking through and listening to us two guys gush over this album. It's really incredible. Anyway, guys, have a good day. We're signing off right now. Bye-bye.